So now we're on to snap design for 3D printed parts. Um, this slide is specifically for FDM and uh, SLA 3D printers. Um, so snap designs that conventionally work with injection molded parts also work pretty well for 3D printed parts. Um, some examples of these conventional designs would be things like a, uh, a cantilever type snap design, um, an L shape uh, type design, uh, or a U shape type design. Um, a key difference between an injection molded and 3D printed part with a snap on it is that you need to keep in mind that with 3D printing, you have to, you have to contend with layers, okay? Um, whereas with injection molding, you don't, it's isotropic. Um, so the parts, they're strong in the X and Y direction, but they're weak in the Z direction. So due to this, due to this limiting factor, uh, you want to design all of your snaps laying down in the X and Y direction, if at all possible. Um, so you can see here, uh, you know, this is a snap that will likely fail because it's up in the Z, it's pointing up in the Z direction and you have all those layer lines. It's going to crack off right towards the bottom. Um, whereas this one right here, the snap was built laying down in X and Y. So you're running that, those layers, the long direction. So you get the flexibility of the plastic. It's not just going to snap off. Now, if you're forced <clears throat> to have to build them in this orientation, throw as big of a radius at the bottom as you can try and eliminate those, those stress concentrators. Even then, if you get them to print, it's only a matter of time till they break. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind that with SLA and FDM, you know, layer direction does pay a, or does affect uh, and play a big role in how long your snaps are going to last uh, once you get them printed. So now we're going to talk about snap design for the MJF process. So um, all the snaps on the previous page are applicable uh, with this process. And because the parts, MJF parts, are isotropically strong, which means they're the same strength in all three directions, you don't have a weak direction. Unlike SLA and FDM, where it's weak in the Z direction, with MJF, it's the same strength in all directions. So you can do a lot more crazy stuff with snap designs than you could get away with uh, with the other uh, technologies. Also, the MJF machine doesn't require supports because it's a powder bed machine. Um, so that means you can do much crazier geometry and not have to figure out, okay, how am I going to remove these supports with SLA or how am I going to wash these supports out with FDM here, a little bit of compressed air blows the powder out and you're good to go. So, um, I'm going to, uh, talk over this video here. Um, and so this is an enclosure, uh, for a PCB board that you'll see here in a second that is planned to be hundred percent manufactured with 3D printing. So we did some really crazy snaps that not only retain the PCB board, but also then flex the other direction to keep the cap over top of the PCB. Um, so right now I'm lining up the PCB boards with these three retainer pins right here. And then I'm gonna start pulling these snaps back and snapping each corner uh, of the board into place. Um, the idea with this design is um, to try and eliminate any hardware, so no screws or anything like that. Make it very fast and efficient to put together in a final assembly <clears throat> at the factory. Um, so have the board in place. Those snaps are retaining it. Um, <clears throat> you can see there the, the snaps are in place. You can also see a section view of those snaps up here. So now I'm going to move the, uh, the two battery leads into position. Um, and, uh, and you'll see here in a second that there's another cover that snaps on over top of these. Um, and all of these <coughs> are designed to be one-way snaps. Um, so that's another cool thing with, with 3D printing is, you know, you can make these really complex enclosures that you can't actually get back open again very easily. Um, <coughs> and here I actually had to take this one apart. So that wall right there is actually broken on this model from me trying to get this apart to show it to you guys. Um, so I have the leads in position. <coughs> you can kind of see how they get dropped in there. Again, really complex little pockets because complexity is free. It's 3D printing. Um, now I'm going to push this cover down into place and it'll snap and uh, those battery leads will be locked into position. So there you go right there. Uh, flip it over. And you'll see the backside here in a second. There it is. 
little pinch there, try and get it sealed up a little better. So now we got our final step of the assembly is to put a cover over top of the PCB board. Um, again, I want to direct your attention up here. You can see these snaps are kind of uh, U-shaped or uh, L-shaped snaps in that it can flex both ways. <clears throat> so you can see there's these little ramps with ledges uh, on the, uh, the edges here of, this, of this, uh, these snap features. And now these snaps are actually going to flex. So before we were flexing them open to get the PCB board in. Now we're going to flex them in to get this cover on. So here I go. I'm uh, getting everything lined up and pushing it down. Bam. Everything snaps into place. Real nice. And the final model, those little holes won't even be there um, to just try and make it you know, very difficult for anyone to get into this after it's assembled. Uh, that's kind of the goal is... Once it's put together, it's never meant to be taken apart again. So rounding out our slides on uh, snap design uh, is another favorite of mine for MJF machines, um, and that is uh, an annular snap. <clears throat> so um, this snap is especially handy when you're splitting up parts uh, that are too large for the 3D printing uh, bed that you have to work with, um, and you want to put them together afterwards, or uh, in the case of this slide, uh, we, we split this part up to improve the yield of the build. So originally with this design, we could only get about 30 of these into the MJF machine. And when we took this top off and we kind of tucked it inside the body, uh, we got it up to 120 of these in a single build. And for us, the way we bill or the way we quote uh, MJF jobs, um, it's the height of the build divided by however many parts you can get in there. So if you've got a 15 inch build that's 35 parts or you have a 15 inch build that's 120 parts, um, you're going to pay way less per assembly for the 120. Um, and the overall cost is going to be roughly the same for, for both of those. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, with, this, uh, with this snap design, you can see it's kind of a lollipop uh, going into a, uh, um, a, a retainer. Um, I recommend starting off with a five thousandths clearance uh, around the ball, maybe like two and a half thousandths around the, the stick, for lack of a better term. Um, but <clears throat> designing these is definitely more of an art than a science, uh, really for all 3D printed snaps. Um, so plan on a few rounds of prototyping for this. Uh, you're probably not going to get it right on the first one. Um, a lot of times, you know, I recommend to customers throw four or five different designs at us and, you know, the price for one versus the price for five is going to be, you know, very close. So if you're not sure of your design, you can do a couple iterations in a single build and, you know, get the most bang for your buck. Um, another thing to keep in mind with annular snaps is they do go together quite hard, especially, you know, when you've got, you know, a whole bunch of them uh, on a part. So I also recommend people plan on, you know, printing, you know, tooling, essentially a nest and kind of an anvil uh, to either put into an arbor press or to put into a bench vise and use like a rubber mallet or something like that. It makes it way easier and way less difficult on the operator uh, to put these things together if you give them a little bit of tooling, especially if you're going to do a bunch of them. Um, so, yeah, so that is kind of the, the gist of annulars. And like I said, it's kind of a trick to get them right. So plan on it taking a couple tries. Okay, well, that is my presentation. Uh, I appreciate your time and sticking with me here to the end. Um, we covered a lot of ground today. Um, you know, definitely hit me up and I'd be happy to share this slide deck with you. Um, again, Paul DeWise, and uh, you can see on the screen here is my email address. So, you know, shoot me an email or uh, I'm extremely active on LinkedIn as well. So please uh, reach out and uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and, you know, slide into my DMs. I'd be happy to send you the, the slide deck that way as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, also, I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions or give feedback on design. So, you know, if you're working on something and uh, it's going to be 3D printed and you're looking for someone to be a second set of eyes, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do a lot of that. Um, and also one last shameless plug, check out our website, uh, forerunner3d.com. Um, it's got a ton of great information. We do a lot of testing and a lot of R and D and we publish everything to our website. So there's great design guides for all the technologies we talked about today, um, with a lot of content that you're just not going to find anywhere else. 
Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for your time and attention and uh, look forward to hopefully hearing from you.